the computer's slow moving like I am today. Um, we're going to jump right into it because this is a big one and I'm going to do my best day of 10 minutes. I do suggest that you go back and maybe study this yourself. There's a ton in here. I'm just going to hit some highlights uh, due to time. But we're in John chapter 4, starting in verse 1, which is Jesus talking with the Samaritan woman. So let's just dive right in. Now Jesus learned that the Pharisees had heard that he was gaining and baptizing more disciples than John. Although in fact it was not Jesus who baptized but his disciples. So he left Judea and went back once more to Galilee. Now he had gone through Samaria. Uh, no, he had to go through Samaria. So he came to a town in Samaria called Sychu, near the plot of ground Jacob had given his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Joseph, tired as he was from his journey, sat down by the well. It was about noon. When a Samaritan woman came to drink water, Jesus said to her, Will you give me a drink? His disciples had gone into town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, You are a Jew, and I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? For Jews do not associate with Samaritans. So just kind of stopping here, um, there's just a, a couple quick points. Again, Samaritans would be considered lesser people um, than the Jews as far as during their culture at that time. Um, the, basically because Samaritans, for the most part, were half Jewish, half Gentile. So they were kind of, if you were Harry Potter, kind of the, the muggles of the group. So there was a little bit of prejudice, not a little bit, there was a lot of prejudice. Uh, kind of think about uh, the problems that we had in our country as far as prejudice, maybe in the, the 50s, uh, maybe in the 40s uh, for African American folks. Um, the, a lot of people that would take this journey during that time, they would bypass and get, take the extra day's trip to get around the city instead of actually going into them. So this is pretty remarkable. Uh, as far as an outsider looking in, that Jesus would stop and talk to someone who um, is a Samaritan and a woman during this time. But it's not that remarkable when you know Jesus' heart and look his ministry at whole. This is just the way he was. Uh, he cared about all people. And so here he's taking this opportunity by sending his disciples away to do an errand, to be able to talk to this woman. And this the particular conversation is a great one as far as learning how to uh, reach out to others ourselves as we are Christ's ambassadors in this world, and we are making his appeal into the world, which we've been studying in the church in 2 Corinthians. So it's interesting that these two are going together uh, for those who also happen to go to the, the Shepherd's Fellowship or watch this podcast. So he starts our conversation with, will you give me a drink? It's a natural question uh, with the surrounding that they're in that uh, makes a lot of sense. Uh, then that's something that um, I, I think shows that he's following the Holy Spirit's lead in the same way that we're supposed to be following the lead, looking for opportunities as he reveals them to be able to start conversations with people. So here's a very natural question, but it throws her because she never thought he would talk to her. And uh, I think this also goes along with some of the other things we've been talking about in some other environments as far as not labeling people and not seeing people the way the world sees them. Uh, and when we do that as Christians, when we uh, take and approach people, uh, offer friendship or offer love to people that other people are not willing to, whether it be because they come from a different culture or have a different background or have a different way of living than we do, um, or whether, you know, somebody within the church is taking and loving and caring for someone that is, uh, uh, well, let's say part of the GLBT community, which is gay, lesbian, bisexual, uh, transgender, that that can throw some people, um, even though it should be natural for us. Uh, or if somebody who <coughs> is um, pretty well off is, is reaching out to somebody who maybe doesn't have any resources, or maybe somebody who doesn't have any resources reaching out to somebody who has a lot of resources just out of love. Uh, there's a, a billion different uh, barriers out there that Jesus shows us that we can walk through. So here's one of them, and he just asks, will, will you give me a drink? Will you, will you um, help me? which is something that would not be normal. So the Samaritan woman says, again, how, how is it that you, that you asked me for a drink? You, you don't normally associate, uh, as far as you Jews, with us. And Jesus answered her, but he doesn't answer her question. Uh, and I like how he works here. His answer is, if you knew the gift of God and who it was to ask for a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. So he kind of ignores what she says and gets to the heart of the matter of what, uh, what, the, what the truth is, is that, it, that I've got something I can give you more. If you knew what really was going on here, I've got something for you, actually. And she says, so you, you've got nothing to draw with, or the, and the well is deep. How, how will you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us this well and drank from it himself, 
as did also his sons and his livestock. And it's interesting that this is all Jacob's well because this is a place where he was coming into a city, but he stopped and camped for a period of time. And this well would have been made as part of his camp, which is kind of where she's at. She, she's about to come into the city, I mean, come into the truth, come into the full life. And here she is, she's been kind of camping just on the outside of it. In the skirts, and, and and she's like, well, we just kind of be dependent on what's been outside. How how is it that you can do something bigger than that? And a lot of people can uh, feel that way as far as uh, with it within our, our world. Like, how how do I get to that that big thing? How do I get to the thing that that matters? And it might not be thinking that they might have just been so used to living at the camp um, that they don't even think about what's bigger than that as far as within this world. They're just used to kind of getting a little bit where God wants to give us all. And so, um, so he's kind of ministering to that and kind of opening that door within that conversation. So she's saying, you know, how, how within just the camp can you, can you give me more? I don't, I don't understand that. I, I've never even conceived of seeing something bigger than just kind of getting through life or just kind of, you know, getting the morsels off the table or whatnot. That she's just kind of settled for not being able to have the full thing, or maybe not even realizing that there's more. Uh, it's interesting, again, with the other studies we're doing, how all this is coming together, because uh, Paul talk, talks about that we, we should not think about this world as our home, because if we are living here like it's our home, then we're away from God. But if we look at this world as a tent, as this kind of a temporary station, then we're constantly aware of that our home is in heaven, our home is in God, and getting ready for that and getting excited about that. And, and um, that, that's the kind of mentality we have to keep as Christians, but it's a, and it's also uh, it could be a detrimental one if we think, if not from a heaven standpoint, but where God's leading us a few points and stopping someplace and making it home. He, he's saying, nope, this is just a tent. Let's keep going. Let's get, this is just where Jacob camped. Let's go, let's go deeper. So he says to her, and she's talking about this, again, he doesn't say, hey, don't worry about a bucket or whatever. He gets right to the heart of the matter. He says in verse 13, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. Whoever drinks this water I, I, that I give him, though, will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become a spring of water welling up eternal life. The woman said to him, so give me this water so that I, I won't get thirsty and have to keep coming here to draw water. So she's still not putting it fully together, but she's getting excited about whatever this thing is that he's talking about. And so then Jesus kind of takes and turns things again, because and he turns things to the challenges in her life and some of the sins that she has done, because we, we can't get the fullness and the living water of Jesus without confessing and giving up of our sins uh, when we come to accept him as leader and forgive in our lives. So he, he says a statement that, that's uh, both truthful, 100% truth, but also 100% love, because I, I know where he's coming from on this. He says to her, instead of like, hey, this is how you get it, let's do this quick thing, uh, give this quick prayer, he says, go and call your husband and come back. And we'll continue this conversation. She goes, I don't have a husband. Jesus said, you're right when you say you don't have a husband. The fact is, you've had five husbands, and the man you live with now is not your husband. What you said is, is quite true. And he, in other words, he's not shying away from the, the challenges of their own life, but she, he still has that door open to the eternal water, the living water. But he's saying, Let, let's deal with, with what's there. Let's, go, let's just go ahead and call it for what it is. And when he does, says this, and he shouldn't have known about this, she's kind of thrown. It's not like she had a Facebook page that he's been stalking her. He, just, he gave her something that the Spirit gave him. And uh, the woman says, so I can see you're a prophet. Our ancestors worship this mountain, but you Jews claim that the place where we must worship is in Jerusalem. She goes, I, I see you're right. That, that's part of my life. Uh, that's who I was, and that's who I am, what I'm struggling with now. <clears throat> and just you reveal that truth, so I, I see that there's something to this. So how can I really even have this anyways? How can I worship God anyways? Because there's, there's some limits the church has put on me. There's some limits that, that you guys say, I can't do this, or I can't do that. But, and I have to go to this place, I have to go to that place. And Jesus spoke right to that, saying, Woman, believe me, a time's coming when you will worship the Father, neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. A time's coming that that tradition just is gone, because he's come to fulfill that law. He says, You Samaritan worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know, for salvation is from the Jews. Yet a time is coming, has now come, <clears throat> when the true worshipers will worship the Father in the Spirit and in truth, for they are the kind of worshipers the Father seek. God is spirit, and his worshipers must worship in spirit and in truth. He says, those bears are just going to fall down. I've come to fulfill all that. I've come to open up that door. That living water is right here. I've come to redeem you of those sins. 
I've come to call you to a new life. I've called to to love and to to make this appeal to others. The times come that it's not a matter of worshiping at this church or that church or this way or that way or what this standard is or what that standard is or what this expectation is or what this expectation is. It is a matter of worshiping in spirit and in truth. If anyone tries to tell you how to worship, where, where, where to worship, that those things don't matter who you worship, how and and that you're worshiping in spirit and truth. Spirit being that, that the spirit is going working through you. Truth is that you're doing that you're biblically focused on God and that you're worshiping Him for that grace <clears throat> and that forgiveness. So so that's what what matters. That God is spirit, and His worshipers must worship in spirit and in truth. And so he just continues and continues and continues to go through and bust through these walls that she has. And then the woman says, I know that the Messiah called Christ is coming. When he comes, he'll explain everything to us. And Jesus declared, I, the one who am speaking, is he. And it's like she's like, you know, well, yeah, I, I kind of hear what you're saying. I'm kind of going with this, but it's almost uncomfortable to kind of have kind of freedom, maybe for the first time, accepting Jesus as a leader, forgiven, having that forgiveness and having that freedom. So she's like, Som someday I'll have that experience with him, and then I'll get all this. And he's like, here I am. It's me. There we go. Let's go. And so he's revealing himself. And again, in today's world, he's revealing himself through us, those who have accepted Jesus as leader, forgiver, to others. And we can start these conversations, and the Spirit can use us if we're willing to go past the, the normal limitations in our life, not see people from a worldly standpoint, but see them as people that God loves dearly and start talking to them. And just maybe something as simple today as saying, hey, can, can I have some water? Or can, you know, hey, hey can um, you, you, you help me out with this? Or can we talk about this? Uh, hey, I see you going through some tough times. Do you need somebody to talk to? Um, hey, just let you know, I, I, I heard the gospel's going around, I kind of try to avoid that kind of thing, but I heard it, and it sounds like you're just having some tough times, so I thought I'd just get away from them and just say to you, I'm praying for you, if there's anything I can do to help, uh, getting past that normal expectation, and then letting the spirit lead conversations like we see it here. So anyways, I followed my limit, I knew I would be, because this is a big chunk, and there's a ton here. Maybe go back, reread it, uh, look at some things, but um, but more than anything else, just again, look, look to spirit today, pray the spirit leads you, and then take those opportunities as he reveals it. We don't change anybody, but he uses us to to reach out to the world through these different ways. So uh, keep your eyes open. He's going. He wants to use you. Thanks, people.